So um, in these example video or example problems, first, if we're going to be good at taking the derivative of a natural log function, we need to be good first at applying the natural log properties. So we will start with number 18 and uh, and apply the, the natural log properties with specific values. Um, so let's back up a little bit and start with some information they give us that the natural log of 2 is approximately 0 0.6931 and that the natural log of 3 is approximately uh, 1.0986 all right so how is that going to help us on number 18 well first we'll start with the natural log of 0.25 okay um, so it might help to write this as the natural log of one fourth. Okay, so how do we get one fourth using um, the the numbers two and three, basically? Um, well, we could write this as the natural log, natural log of 1 over 2 squared. Okay, uh, so that makes us see I have, I've used the number 2 here, keeping in mind that there are these properties of, uh, of, of having an exponent in there, of having a product, of having a quotient. Um, so if I write this as the natural log of 2 to the negative 2 then, uh, now I can bring down this negative 2 in front using that uh, second property of logarithms. I believe that is. Nope, the third one with an exponent. We can bring down the exponent. Natural log of 2. Now we have negative 2 times 0 0.6931. And uh, I'll, I'll let you handle the heavy lifting there. and Plug that in your calculator if you like. Uh, the natural log of 24. Okay. So we need to represent 24 as uh, maybe a power of 2 or a power of 3, right? That's, a, that's a, a, a property we just used. Or we need to represent it as a product of 2 and 3 or a product of a power of 2 with a power of 3. Um, or just a power, you can think of it as a product of a bunch of 2s and 3s. Uh, well, let's let me maybe start this way. The natural log of, let's call it 6 times 4. Well, that would be the natural log of 3 times 2 times, this is 6, times 2 times 2, that's 4. So that's the natural log of 3 times 2 to the third. And then we use the second property of logs that's listed in our book, and we have the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 2 to the third. Uh, and then we have... Well, the natural log of 3 is 1.0986. And we can, again, like we did in this previous problem, bring down the 3 in front of the natural log. And the natural log of 2 is just 0.06931. So there we go. Uh, part C, the natural log of the third root of 12. Well, we could write this as the natural log of 12 to the 1 3rd, and then bring down that power, 1 3rd times the natural log of 12. And we could write 12 as 2 uh, to the 2nd power times 3, now that we're acquainted with, with that idea. So it's 4 times 3. Okay, so that's 1 3rd times... Uh, the natural log of 2 squared plus the natural log of 3. So we have 1 third times, bring down that 2, 2 times the natural log of 2. The natural log of 2 is 0 0.06931. And then the natural log of 3 is that uh, 1.0986. Okay, so um, just making sure that... Y you know the, the the cubed root applied to this entire number, so that one third uh, multiplier should apply to the whole thing, right? It should apply to like when I break apart this natural log of of two squared times three into a sum, this one third needs to be multiplied by that whole thing because this 
this entire expression is equal to this one natural one natural log. So uh, just keep those things in mind as you're simplifying these. Um, and part D is um, natural log of one over seventy-two. Okay. Um, let's go about this in. Uh, it's kind of similar to this problem, but uh, let's think about it in a little bit of a different way since we're here. Uh, we can do 72 to the negative 1, right? That's the same as 1 over uh, 1 over 72. So we can do negative natural log of 72. Okay, that makes things kind of easy. Uh, and then we'll write 72 as a product of 2s and 3s, a power of 2 and a power of 3. Um, so like this is what goes on in my head. I, I think 72 is 9 times 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 9 times 8, well 9 is 3 squared, and 8 is 2 to the third, so what we have here is negative times the natural log of 3 squared times 2 to the third, because that's 9 times 8. We have negative times the natural log of 3 squared, plus the natural log of 2 to the third, so we have negative uh, 2 times, bring down that exponent, 2 times the natural log of 3, which is 1.0986, uh, plus 3 times, bring down that power, 3 times the natural log of 2, which is 0.6931. Okay, and, and I haven't plugged in these numbers into a calculator, but that's the easy part, right? Separating them out is the challenge. Okay. So now we've done it with specific numbers. So let's try it with some, um, let's see. Well, we'll I guess we'll try start with some numbers and then we'll exp <coughs> expand out to some uh, variables. So the natural log of the square root of 2 to the third. First, we'll write this as the natural log of 2 to the third to the 1 half. So as we get more acquainted with the, the properties of exponent or properties of natural logarithms, we're going to keep thinking in terms of products and quotients and powers. So if we can write this as a power, we can use this we can call the power property of logs of two to the third. Okay. Um, and then we can have we can bring this down and multiply it by the one half. So we have three halves uh, times the natural log of two, and then the natural log of 2 is, uh, what was it, 0 0, 0.6931. Uh, so that's that's all expanded out as, as much as it can be. Um, 21 uh, is the natural log of x times y over z. So I look at this first as a number divided by another number. This number just happens to be two numbers multiplied together. But there's a property that says the natural log of a number divided by a number is the natural log of that, that numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. Then this guy here, this is, a, this is all simplified as possible. It's the natural log of a single thing. This could be the natural log of uh, x plus the natural log of y, and then we subtract the natural log of z. All right. Uh, for number 23, natural log of the third root of a squared plus 1. Uh, we can write this as the natural log of a squared plus 1 to the 1 third power then we can multiply, uh, make this the coefficient, right? One third times the natural log of a squared plus one. And now it's important to know that you're done. You might want to expand this out into the natural log of a squared plus the natural log of one, but that there's no property that says that. If, if I had an expression that was the natural log of a squared plus the natural log of one, it must have come from the property that allows me to do that, which is would be a product, the natural log of a squared times 1. That's not what this is. So that's what this problem was built to do, to try and trick you and then have uh, someone remind you that 
that you can't do that. So um, there's some examples there. Let's go the other way with number, I guess starting with number 30. Let's put things together. So 3 times the natural log of x plus 2 times the natural log of y minus 4 times the natural log of z. So in this one we want to we want to condense this the in blue we were expanding and now we're condensing. We took a natural log of a single thing and made it the natural log of a, a few things. Now we're going to take the natural log of a few things and put it together the natural log of a single expression. Okay. So, let's see. Well, these two are added together. So I can I can almost put them together as the natural log of x times y except for there's a 2 and a 3 here. Uh, and for that matter, there's a 4 in front of this one. So what the, the property that, uh, that has to do with a, a multiplier says that that could also be written as the power of x. And we could write this as the natural log of y squared and minus the natural log of z to the fourth. Then these two are added together. That could be the natural log of x, y, and then minus the natural log, or sorry, x uh, to the third y squared, minus the natural log of z to the fourth. And so now we have a natural log of something minus the natural log of something else. It's just looking worse the more I try to fix that. Uh, so we have the natural log of the first thing over uh, the second thing. Okay, that's that property that says that the natural log of a quotient can be written as the difference of the logs. Okay. And that now we have the natural log of a single thing, and so we're, we're done. We know we're done. 31. One third times the quantity 2 times the natural log of x plus 3. <coughs> plus the natural log of x minus the natural log of x squared minus 1. And now we can end these brackets. All right. So you might look at this 1 third and think, oh, I can make that the exponent. But I can only get the exponent if it's, say, like, you know, if it were 1 third times the natural log of something. This is 1 third times this big quantity. So we've got to get this quantity condensed down to a single natural log, and then this can become the power. So if we look at each of these, uh, we might want to try and add these together or to write them uh, using that property, but the property does not account for this 2 being out here. So again, just like we did for this one, we're going to bring those up and make those the powers. We'll bring these up and make these the powers. So 1 third times the natural log of x plus 3 squared plus just the natural log of x minus the natural log of x squared minus 1. So this is the only one that had a power on it, unless I wrote it wrong. Nope, that's good. Okay, so we're going to put all this together. Um, I'll come down here. Uh, that'll be 1 third times... Well, these two are added together, so I could write them as the product. So the natural log of x plus 3 squared times x uh, minus the natural log of x squared minus 1. And that can be rewritten. Since this is a difference, I can write it as the, quotient, the natural log of a quotient. So that'd be the natural log of this first thing. That'd be x plus 3 squared times x, and then over the thing that's being subtracted, x squared minus 1. Okay. Now we have the a, a multiplier, a coefficient of a single natural log, and that means we can write it as a power. And rather than doing this in two steps, we'll recognize that the power of 1 third is the same as the third root so the natural log of the third root of x plus 3 squared times x over x squared minus 1. So there is a lesson in condensing things. All right. Let's continue on. So now, 
we will actually take some derivatives uh, using our skills in expanding natural logs to make these uh, easier to take, uh, possible to take. So I'll start off easy, 45, the natural log of x squared, g of x equals the natural log of x squared. So what is g prime? That's what we want to find. Uh, to do that, we need to take the derivative of the natural log of x squared. We can certainly make this easier by using the, the properties of logarithms by taking this exponent here and bringing it down in front of the natural log. So this is equal to the derivative of 2 times the natural log of x. And if we take the derivative of a, a constant multiple uh, times some function, well, that would just be the constant multiple times the derivative of the function. The derivative of 1 over x, or sorry, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Okay. Um, so, and we talked about that briefly in the previous video. Uh, so, remember for all of these, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And then, if we wanted to expand it and say the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of something, of, of, of an inside function, right, this just becomes the chain rule. We get 1 over u, that's the derivative of, of this function, then t the, you know, the chain rule then says to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, that'd be u prime. So we get u prime over u. Okay, this is where we have the derivative over uh, the function, or the function under its own derivative. So, we'll just continue on then, remembering those two things. Uh, next, we'll do 48. y is equal to x times the natural log of x. So, what's y prime? is equal to the derivative of x times the natural log of x. Okay, um, You might be thinking, well, x is times natural log of x, so why don't we put x up in the power? Uh, but that certainly doesn't make any things any easier. Right? It's easier when we expand, and, and, and putting this up in the power is called condensing, and it's not even legal, because this isn't a number, it's a variable. So anyway, that, that idea is shot. Um, but here what we have is a function times a function. And so here come all the other rules back, uh, you know, rolling into uh, this new section. So the derivative of a product of functions requires the product rule. So first we're going to take the derivative of x. Well, that's just 1. Then we're going to multiply that by the natural log of x. So 1 times the natural log of x. Make sure that looks kind of like a 1. Uh, then uh, we're going to add uh, x times the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. So this is just the natural log of x plus 1, because x and x cancel. Natural log of x plus 1. Uh, <coughs> okay. So, simple as that. Now, if we have products of functions, we use the product rule, now knowing what the derivative of this new function is. Um, and let's see. Now number 51. f of x equals the natural log of x over x squared plus 1. All right, so the derivative f prime is equal to the derivative of natural log of x over x squared plus 1. So we use the properties of logs to rewrite this. So there's the, we'll call it the quotient property. Uh, that would be, we're going to take the derivative of the natural log of x minus the natural log of x squared plus 1. Uh, because we have that quotient property that tells us if we have the natural log of one thing divided by the other, we can take the difference of the logs. Right, so the 
derivative of this would just be the derivative of the first minus the derivative of the second, because it's just the difference property, uh, the difference rule of taking derivatives. And we can't split this up anymore. Okay, keep that in mind. We can't write this as the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of 1. That's only for products. Um, so that's the, the only way that that's going to work. But we can't take the, deriv the deriv derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. Uh, then we can subtract the derivative of this, which just needs the chain rule version of the derivative of the natural log. So the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that something. Then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of that something, that inside function, and that would just be 2x. So if we want, we could write this as 1 over x minus 2x over x squared plus 1. That's that u prime over u, u prime over u. All right. Um, let's take some more derivatives, because what could be better than that? Um, 53. The answer is nothing. could be better than that. g of t is equal to the natural log of t over t squared. Um, okay. So here, uh, we have not the natural log of something divided by something, but the natural log of something, and then that natural log is divided by something else. Okay, so now it becomes a matter of taking the derivative of a quotient, which requires the quotient rule. So we, we use the quotient rule, and that would be uh, low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below, right? So we remember that. Uh, so low d high, the d it means the derivative of the high. So the derivative of the natural log of t would be 1 over t. And we'll multiply that by t squared minus the natural log of t times the derivative of the denominator, that'd be 2t, over the square of t squared, which would be t to the fourth. So we didn't really need to use any properties. We needed to use uh, the, the quotient rule. And then when it came time to take the derivative of the natural log of t, we knew what that was. We can clean it up a little bit, though. We can cancel these t's out and just get t uh, minus, uh, if we wanted to, this is 2 times the natural log of t, so we can make this a natural log of t squared. And all that goes over t to the fourth. OK, so we could do that if we like, which we do like to do. So we did it. 55, y equals the natural log of the natural log of x squared. So what we have is a natural log inside of a natural log. It's not a natural log times a natural log. It's not a proper, or, you know, property rule thing. Um, it is a natural log inside of a natural log. So we're really going to think about this for a second. Uh, when we have a function inside a function, we need to use the chain rule. So the derivative, y prime, is equal to, well, we're, we're going to take the natural log, or the derivative of the natural log of something. The derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that something. That something is the natural log of x squared. OK, then we multiply it by the derivative of this guy here. OK, so that's the chain rule talking. The derivative of the natural log of x squared, well, it's just the derivative of the natural log of something, so that's 1 over that something, times the derivative of that. You see we have a function inside a function inside a function. So we, we first took the derivative of the most outside function. That gave us 1 over the natural log of x squared. Then the derivative of the natural log of x squared gives us 1 over x squared. Then the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of x squared, would be 2x. And then we're done. There's nothing inside of this function, nothing inside of x squared. So uh, what a doozy. And we can just clean this up a bit. We get 2x, actually, we could say that these x's cancel this x, and one of those x's cancel. So you could just say 2 over x times the natural log of x squared. Uh, then we could bring this 2 down in front here. Um, so that would be, 
is, right? 2 over uh, x, say, times 2 uh, times the natural log of x, and these 2s could cancel, and we get 1 over x natural log x. Wow. So, there you go. We used the chain rule twice. Uh, we canceled things out. We used the properties of logarithms to get it quite simple. Um, and what else can I say? There's the derivative. Uh, 63. So I'm going to go over here and up there. wonder what that's about. Okay. Um, 63. So y equals the natural log of the absolute value of the sine of x. So why the absolute value signs? Why do we put that? Well, it's because the natural log, if you remember from the discussion in the previous video, is undefined for values of x that are less than 0, and the sine of x is sometimes less than 0. So we need to find a way to have that not happen, because we're just going to have these chunks of this function that are undefined. So we'll just say the absolute value of the sine of x, so that if sine of x happens to be negative 1 half, we'll let it be 1 half, and we'll take the natural log of 1 half. So we'll just um, talk about that for a second. What do I do with that? What do I do with the natural log of an absolute value? It turns out that we can ignore it, really, um, because uh, what would happen is if we tried to take the you know, treat it like a, a negative, then uh, basically when you take the derivative and you got, you got u prime over u, you would get two negatives and they cancel out and become positive. So the end, of the, the end of the story is you actually, it doesn't make any difference in how you approach this problem. We could treat it like it wasn't absolute value, but parentheses. Okay, so we'll just treat it like the previous problems we've had. So y prime is equal to, well, the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that something. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, right? That's the chain rule. So that would be the cosine. So that's cosine over sine. So that is the cotangent of x. Okay. That's pretty. These derivatives turn out to be pretty, pretty interesting. I know you're all riveted. Um, so next we'll jump to that really awesome rule. Uh, or not rule, but... Uh, approach for taking derivatives. It's really neat. Um, and it's just one of those things that uh, is, is just so mind-blowing and life-changing. Uh, and it's also just a really cool trick. So if anybody ever uh, is at a party and they, they pull out a, a trick, then you have this one to show them. Uh, so uh, one, like, like check this one out. So uh, put your hand like this, okay, and then and then turn it like that. Make it palm down. Okay? So if somebody shows up at a party and they're like, check out this cool trick, and they say, do that, but don't turn your wrist. Okay? So let me show you that. Uh, so just follow me. You just lift up like this, right? Not turning my wrist. Keeping my wrist straight. So come down like this, up like that, over here, like that. And now you're palm down, and you never you're turned your wrist. Okay, so it's a fun party trick. If somebody ever tries to come up to you and say, you know, hey, check that out. You've always got this next uh, integration trick to uh, top them. So check this out. You'll say you'll you'll pull out a pad of paper and you'll write this down. You say, uh, well, take this function. This is 94, by the way. Take this function square root of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 and take that derivative and they'll, they'll be all I can't do that or they'll say well that's that's gonna be a lot of a lot of work because then I'm gonna have to write this as like the power of one half and then I could use the power the, the the power rule but then I'd have to use the product rule a bunch of times and then they you know they start to cry because they can't do it and you say ha you know you got them right where you want them because you're gonna use this logarithmic integration so what we do is take this function and we'll take the natural log of both sides so we'll take the natural log of y 
equals the natural log of the square root of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. And then we'll use the properties of logs to expand this out, making taking the derivative really easy. So the natural log of y equals, um, this is going to be a 1 half power, right? And then we're going to pull that down. So that's going to be 1 half times the natural log of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times, uh, that should say 2, x minus 3, right? And then we have these, the, the product of these three things. So we could write this as, remember this is the natural log of y equals 1 half times the natural log of x minus 1 plus the natural log of x minus 2 plus the natural log of x minus 3. Okay, you know what that's supposed to say, x minus 3. Okay, uh, and now we want to take the derivative of, of of both sides, okay? So on this side, the natural log of y, remember we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So the natural log of y, uh, if we were to remember our chain rule, the natural log, or the, the derivative, the derivative of the natural log of some function of x is equal to u prime over u. So that's easy, that's just y prime over y, and notice what we want to know is y prime, obviously. Like we would have at the beginning like to say y prime equals this easy derivative. So that's getting us there. Um, so the derivative of this side though is, well, this is the constant multiple, so we say one half times the derivative of the natural log of x minus one. Well that's just one over x minus one. And then we might say well we need to multiply by the derivative because of the chain rule the derivative of x minus 1, but the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. So uh, that, that got pretty easy. So 1 over x minus 1 plus the derivative of the natural log of x minus 2, that's just going to be 1 over x minus 2 times the derivative of x minus 2, which is just 1. Okay, so that's convenient. Plus 1 over x minus 3. Okay, so now what do we do? We wanted y prime all along, so we'll multiply by y on both sides. So that about this time, this guy at the party is, is is just like, his eyes are starting to get real wide and he's really impressed with you. So we have 1 half times 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 3, right? Okay, and you say, well, that's kind of weak because you define the derivative of y with y in it. But y is this. So we just replace that with y. So y prime is equal to the square root of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. Uh, let's say times 1 half, so we'll just put a 1 half right there, uh, times 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 3. And we'll just leave it like that. That That is the derivative. 1 half times the square root of uh, x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. That's That was the original function y. Uh, and, you know, times the sum of these fractions. And we could find a common denominator and add these together, but we don't have to. If we had instead tried to use, uh, you know, write this as a one-half power and then use the chain rule and the product rule a bunch of times, uh, you know, we would have been crying. But since we use logarithmic differentiation, we could split this up into a bunch of functions and made the derivative taking so easy. Um, so, you know, now, <laughs> the next time you're at a party, give that a try. People will be just lining up to be your friend. Um, let's try that one more time. Let's do another one with logarithmic differentiation. This will be 95. Um, let's see. Oh, I just did 94. I meant to do 95 and 96. Oh, what to do? 95 is a good one. So, y equals x squared times the square root of 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 squared. 
so how do we use logarithmic differentiation? So the thing about logarithmic differentiation is we should be able to see that this could be really simplified and stretched out and expanded if we had the natural log of this function. So we'll do that. We'll take the natural log of both sides equals the natural log of x squared times the square root of 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 squared. Okay. So then we can use natural uh, we can use the properties of natural logs to expand this out. We get the natural log of y equals, oh, we got a quotient here, so we have the natural log of x squared times the square root of 3x minus 2 uh, minus the natural log of x minus 1 squared. The natural log of y equals, okay, this is a product, so we can write it as the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of the square root of 3x minus 2 minus uh, this, uh, this is power, so we could write it as 2 times the natural log of x minus 1. Okay, then we have the natural log of y equals, we could write this as 2 times the natural log of x. Uh, here we could write this as a 1 half power and bring that down in front, so we'd have the 1 half times the natural log of 3x minus 2. Uh, minus 2 times the natural log of x minus 1. And then we take the derivative of both sides. Okay, this side is the same as the previous problem where we just get y prime over y. Uh, and over here we get 2 times the natural log of x. We want the derivative of, the, of, of 2 times the natural log of x. That's just 2 times 1 over x uh, plus, okay, 1 half times the derivative of the natural log of 3x minus 2. So that's just, uh, you know, the derivative of the natural log of something will be 1 over that something times the derivative of that inside function. Now this actually does have uh, a derivative that's not 1, so the derivative of 3x minus 2 would be 3. Okay, minus 2 times the natural log of, of x minus 1. So the derivative of the natural log of x minus 1 would be 1 over x minus 1 times the derivative of x minus 1, which is just 1, so nothing to see there. Uh, so let's see, let's first clean up the right side a little bit. So we'll keep this y prime over, or y equals, uh, let's say, 2 over x plus 3, like 3 over 1, right? 3 over uh, 2 times 3x minus 2. So we got 6x minus 4 um, minus 2 over x minus 1. So that makes it a little cleaner. Then uh, we multiply by y on both sides. Get y prime equals y times 1 over x, or sorry, 2 over x plus 3 over 6x minus 4 minus 2 over x minus 1. Uh, and thing about this to remember is that y was originally this big expression, so x squared times the square root of 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 squared times 2 over x plus 3 over 6x minus 4 minus 2 over x minus 1. So pretty cool little idea, pretty cool trick. You could take the derivative of this without logarithmic differentiation, but it would first require the, uh, the quotient rule, okay, which then would mean that we do low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below, so we try to take the derivative of this and we notice, okay, uh, I gotta use the product rule on this. So that part requires us to take the derivative of this uh, times this plus derivative of this times this. Okay, so that's just the derivative of that that we multiply by. The, and then it's just, man, it gets messy. It gets really messy. I mean, could you imagine trying to find some a derivative this complicated without the, the logarithmic differentiation? Um, I know this isn't the easiest thing to do, but it's loads easier than trying to take the derivative of that without it. So uh, pretty awesome. Uh, pretty awesome idea. Whoever came up with that, kudos to you, sir. Um, let's move on to the last two, and it just has to do with properties of logarithms. Not a big deal, but and it, just a couple of important things to remember as we're doing this. Um, the question is, 
true or false? The natural log of x plus 25 is equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of 25. Okay. Hopefully we know this to be false. If we don't know it to be false, I'm going to prove it to you that it's false right now. And to prove things false is really easy. All you need to prove is that it doesn't work for even one example. So uh, this is called a counterexample. So if we say the natural log of 3 plus 25, suppose, just assume, that the natural log that equals the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 25. All you have to do is take the natural log of 3 plus 25, the natural log of 28, and compare that to the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 25. So we just uh, turn on that calculator, clear that up. The natural log button's right there. So let's take the natural log of 28. Done. Now let's take the natural log of 3. No. The natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 25. If they're equal, then we should get 3.33220451, and we don't. So this can't be true. It's false, and it's just by this counter example. Um, this is, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's just called a counter example. I just give you an example where this doesn't work, uh, and since they're not equal, these can't be equal, and so that original statement is false. Um, do 104. Uh, true or false if the natural log, or sorry, if y equals the natural log of pi, then y prime equals 1 over pi. Okay, so you might think, yeah, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, so the, uh, the derivative of the natural log of pi is 1 over pi. You're, most common, or your, your mistake you're making really is is probably thinking of pi as as some variable because it's this weird symbol and we're used to symbols representing letters or, or numbers. And I guess it's true this does represent a number, but a specific number, not like x. X represents a, a thing that can change. So pi is just a specific number. The natural log of pi is some specific number. The natural log of pi is. 1.1447 and so on. It's a specific value. It's an, an actual number. So the derivative of a number, uh, the derivative of the natural log of pi, the derivative of one point whatever it was of a number is always equal to zero. So y prime would be zero, not one over pi. Okay. And it's, when we say that the derivative of natural log of x, the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x, x is a variable, right? The, the derivative is, uh, you know, the value of the slope at any particular point. So we could say that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, and the value of the derivative of the natural log of x at pi is 1 over pi. But if y is equal to the natural log of pi, y is equal to a number. And the derivative of a number is 0. Okay, So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Again, get in contact with me and let me know if there's any questions. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.